Well, hey, here we are at the Cloud Foundry Summit in lovely Santa Clara. You want to introduce yourself? It's beautiful, yeah. My name is Richard Sarother. I'm the VP of product for CenturyLink, for covering cloud hosting technologies. So not too long ago, uh, as in maybe 30, 40 minutes, I, saw, you, you, I thought you gave a nice talk that was like a, a list of common, um, what would you call it? Barriers to people yeah. thinking thinking correctly. A little challenge response. You <laughs> yeah, know, it's arguing with yourself, hopefully with others. And 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 there there was a fair amount of like the uh, the sort of common high level things that that all of us in the cloud foundry you know ecosystem encounter. And and there's two there was two points that you discussed about developers that I thought was 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 interesting and and, and kind of clever and insightful. And the first one was essentially, um, you know. I always categorize this as those damn developers, right? Like they're, they're the ones who write bugs and they're up to hijinks. And like, yeah. if we give them the self-service platform, uh, they're gonna go crazy. It's Thunderdome, <laughs> I, I can't it's, handle that. Exactly. And and so, I mean, can you kind of, can you go over like that, that framing and what the, right. the counterintuitive answer for it was? Yeah, so I, mean, I was covering it and I mentioned, I, I spoke to some of our salespeople, even our customers, just saying, what do you hear? What are the concerns? And so this one was, sure, PaaS gives, first off, developers too much freedom. When I want to use a PaaS, all of a sudden it, it's anarchy because I'm pushing to prod, I'm scaling stuff. I've lost all sorts of governance and control and it's mayhem. I can't bring that into my company. And so the response that, that I gave was more around, it's actually more governance than you think there is. There's, there's usage constraints that say, boy, I can't have runaway consumption because I can set these policies that limit my RAM consumption, or my instance counts, things like that. There's the service catalog. I just can't go connect willy-nilly to anything I want. It's actually a really nicely defined service right. catalog. Or configuration management, right? It's not just configuration drift out of all over the place where I'm updating machines, doing weird registry settings on a Windows box. It's just push your app with a manifest. So there's more structure than maybe a developer realizes, which is maybe the good yeah, thing. Yeah, no, and, and, and I'm actually encapsulated more than I think I am. Yeah, no, and, and, and what, I, what, I, what I enjoyed about that that response, if you will, that, that answer was it, it, it went over both of the aspects that you talked about. Not only the fact that at the infrastructure layer you can be careful what you ask for because you can manage as to as whatever fine grain you want, <laughs> right? But also the idea that because uh, because we have all these services, I mean, I always kind of like call it middleware, just right. to like relate it. But but you can actually finely tune that in the same sort of way, which is another is actually a lot more control you have over developers, it, to put it that way. Now, conversely, you have a lot more control over developers. <laughs> so, right, so you're putting me in a cage. That's you know, right. That's the point is. Sometimes the first thing we hear from this, especially in this container world, is, shoot, why, why am I boxing myself up? I can go to a, you know, a Docker native platform and a cluster aware OS, and I can just do whatever I want, an Elk stack, you know, Cassandra database. I can do whatever I want. In a PaaS, you're saying, here's my service catalog and my programming languages, and I got to do 12 factor to fit. Yeah. Eh. You're like, you're, don't hem me in, man. Right. You know, at the same time, it's the same counterpoints are, again, I'm sure as you and most, when we talk to devs, it's, and as one, the hardest part is sometimes getting access to things. Some of those other things are gravy. Like the first problem is I just can't find a place to run my app. I, I can't run, let alone multi-language, when I want to have one service in Java, but I want to build the rest of my stuff in JavaScript or whatever. Being able to have that is huge. Being able yeah. to have elastic scale without picking up a phone call or open a dumb ticket to simply scale my app a little bit. Like those are, it's 80-20, right? I might put up with 20% of restriction, but that 80% solves so much. Yeah. That for a lot of developers, that's, okay, take a step back. You're telling me you're giving me this elastic runtime environment that scales like crazy with new services. All right, I, I can live with maybe a little bit of guardrails yeah. around there, there's, there's, hurling there's, down the freeway. There, there's enough give that the, the, the minimal take you have is, is fine. Like you don't, uh, I guess it's fine to invent the entire universe, but man, it's, it seems exhausting. My well, choice is tough, man. I mean, even as we you know, talk to you and other and analysts, is that developers are faced with a heck of a lot of choices right now. And sometimes yeah. that gets in the way of actually shipping because you're so distracted that yeah, a little focus is a good thing. Yeah, yeah one of the, uh, there's been a lot of users talking about how they've used Cloud Foundry. And one of the ones that spoke this morning said that, you know, it, it used to take them like two months to get a server. Right. And then and then they, they got a whole like, uh, you know, uh, an app in the app store in five weeks from like concept to like being approved in the app store, which is, you know, it's not sort of like a perfect number, but you realize that they would have had to request a lot of servers. <laughs> so it's it's that speed that you get. Shipping is intoxicating. Yeah, At the yeah. end of the day, once you get a taste of it, these sort of platforms, again, you're willing to put up with any quote unquote constraints to keep that feeling going. You know, it's the, it's the worst drug or the best drug, I guess. but. <laughs> You know, that's where this stuff, I think, makes a difference. When you finally sit down to a developer and talk about 
this is what you're getting. And same with the ops person, right? Don't be freaked out. You play a part in this, but you play a part in building CI CD processes. You build parts in maintaining maybe some of the manifest descriptions and source control. Yeah, I don't necessarily need you to be doing all your old OPSI stuff, but there's some yeah. new OPSI stuff that still actually really matters. Yeah, well, great. Well, thanks for giving us that overview. Thanks, it, was, man. Uh, it was It was a good, it was a good talk. Awesome.